Transmission jammed. Proximity coverage only. Hey guys, Jacob here. As you know, TU10 is right around the corner, and this is going to be the first patch notes for Phase 1 for Title Update 10. So you guys can now go in there and test out some of the new exotics, some of the new gear sets, and some of the new high-end weapons. But first, it says for the first PTS phase, we'd like feedback on these topics in particular. Weapon balancing, gear set balance, PvP damage in time to kill, difficulty in player power, and loot rewards. Uh, you guys will actually not be able to access the Raid 2 and Season 2, which is now Operation Iron Horse, and you guys were calling it Foundry, so now we have the official name for the second raid. And first is going to be the new exotics, which a while back I was talking about if they'd finally add a new sniper rifle, because we had pretty much, you know, double, uh, we had three assault rifles, two SMGs, two LMGs, and I was hoping they'd add a sniper rifle in Warlords New York, but now it appears we're going to be getting it in TU-10, which is the SRS Sniper Rifle Mantis. And this is going to be the talents. Your scope view displays additional information about enemies not targeting you. It says headshots and weak point damage against enemies not targeting you are amplified by 50%. Headshot kills reset the cooldown of the decoy skill. This bonus will wait until the decoy goes on cooldown if currently active. So I'll actually pull up a picture you guys can see real quick of the new sniper Mantis. This is an SRS sniper rifle and it actually looks pretty awesome. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this over the Nemesis. But it's still nice that they added a new sniper rifle so we have a few options now. Next is going to be the Mask Vial. Status effects also apply a damage over time debuff for 10 seconds. Total damage dealt is equal to 50% of your concussion grenade damage and increased by your status effect attributes. So I don't actually don't have a picture of this. There's a few places online you guys can actually see this on YouTube if you're curious to see what it looks like. It kind of has that Darth Vader kind of vibe going on with it and it looks pretty awesome. It's got like a purple hue to it. Then next is going to be the double barreled rifle, which is the Ravenous, which you guys have seen for a while now. I've been posting pictures on some other videos. On trigger pull, fire both barrels at once. When fired from right shoulder, it hits enough. If it's of primers and defensive primers, when fired from left shoulder. Hits from one shoulder will detonate all the opposite shoulder primers when present. When detonated, each offensive primer deals 100% weapon damage, while each defensive primer grants 4% bonus armor and adds 10% amplified damage to armor plates for 5 seconds. Primer effectiveness is doubled at 10 stacks. And you guys have seen a quick little glimpse of the Ravenous, but I'll pull up a picture as well. This is from the PTS and this is a closer look, so you guys can take a look at it, and it actually looks pretty awesome. Uh, originally, I thought this was going to be an assault rifle, um, but looking up online and some research about this, it's a semi automatic rifle. Uh, but overall, this is going to be pretty awesome to have. Next is going to be the Regulus. Headshot kills great. A 5 meter explosion, dealing 400% weapon damage and applying bleed to enemies that hit high base damage. And this is going to be the Magnum Revolver, which you guys have seen this as well which is going to be uh, this is the revolver this was posted a long time ago and a bit of a uh, showcase here on it but they did not have this really for the red um, but they did have a picture now we could see what it looks like but you guys have seen this already and those are the new exotics so far that are being added to the game the regulus and are supposed to be the two new in the raid so apparently that's where you're going to get both of these and the other ones i'm not sure we're going to get them uh, but hopefully you'll be able to get them pretty easily Next is going to be the new gear sets, which we have a few ones of the ones we already know so far, and that's going to be the Bulwark and the Future Initiative. But we have, we have a new one here called Eclipse Protocol, which is this is a score, uh, core still, uh, skill tier, which is yellow. We have two piece and three piece, which is 15% status effect, and the three piece is 15% skill haste and 30% hazard protection. Number four is indirect transmission. Enemies that die while affected by your status effects spread to those status effects to another enemy um, within 15 meters and refresh 50% of that duration. And the chest talent is uh, pulverization, which is increased in direct transmission range from 15 meters to 20 meters and refresh percentage from 50% to 75%. And the back, ta back talent is symptom aggravator. <laughs> I can't speak. And applies all damage you deal to status effect targets by 15%. And then you have Foundry Bulwark, which is a blue core attribute uh, brand set, or gear set, my bad, which is 10% armor, 3% armor regeneration. Then we have number four, which is makeshift repairs. Whenever you or your shield takes damage, 40% of that amount is repaired to both over 10 seconds. The chest talent, the backpack talent, which we did not know yet, uh, know yet which is process refinery, increases makeshift repairs from 40% to 60%. And the backpack talent is improved materials, increase makeshift repair speed from 10 seconds to 6 seconds. Then future initiative, which is going to be kind of, I guess, the one people are talking about being the new reclaimer, which is the yellow core skill tier. You get 15% repair skills, 15% skill duration, and 15% skill haste. And then ground control increases you and your allies total weapon and skill damage by 15% when at full armor. 
when you repair an ally, you and your allies within 5 meters are also repaired for 60% of that amount. And this is the chest talent. Tactical superiority, increased ground control damage bonus from 50% to 25%. And the backpack talent is advanced combat tactics, increased ground control proximity repair from 60 to 120%. And the new gear brand, which is going to be the Walker Harrison Co., uh, or company, which is the core attribute is red. So I'm real excited about this one. You get weapon damage, damage to armor, and damage to health. So all three of these are really good. Um, but I can see a lot of you guys just using the one piece and the two piece just to get that armor and weapon damage. New talents, which is going to be future perfect. Weapon kills grant one uh, one skill tier for 15 seconds. Sacks up to three times. Weapon kills at skill tier six. Grants overcharge for 15 seconds. Overcharge cooldown is 90 seconds. So if you guys are skill build players, I can see you guys using this a lot. Next is going to be the weapon talent in sync. Hitting enemy grants 50% skill damage for 5 seconds. Using a skill or damaging an enemy within a skill grants 15% weapon damage for 5 seconds. Damage increase are doubled while both buffs are active at the same time. Then we have the backpack talent adrenaline rush. When you are within 10 meters of an enemy, gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds. Stacks up to 3 times. Cooldown is 5 seconds. Um, I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of backpack talents uh, that I don't really use. But most likely I will be using this one because this seems really nice if you're trying to face tank NPCs or if you're in PvP. Um, I can see a lot of people using this just to face tank players. The next talent is going to be Headhunter. After killing an enemy within a headshot, your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals 125% of that killing blow's damage in addition to it. This damage is capped to 1500 of your weapon damage. So I can see a lot of people using this with a sniper rifle. Gameplay changes, you guys can see here these are some of the reduced how many elites will spawn in the following missions. So if you guys had any issues with those, uh, there you have it. The loot, which is general, added all new Season 2 weapon and gear to general loot pools. Target loot, increased target loot drop chances for all missions and control point difficulties. Added new Season 2 brand to target loot rotation New York. Named item, increases named item from drop chance to regular Dark Zone loot. Increased named item drop and target loot everywhere. The new exotics added Warlords New York Season 1 exotics, including the Bighorn, to target loot. Add a Warlords New York Season 1 Exotics, including the Bighorn to general exotic loot pools, Heroic, Legendary, Raid, Exotic Cache. So by those like you guys can now get uh, that now in the Exotic Cache and in Heroic Missions. Coyote Mask Drop from Coyote no longer has a minimum Season Level requirement. Control Points removed regular weapons, gear, loot containers, not scaling with difficulty control points. Increase the amount of scaling loot from big control point reward containers. Legendary increased NPC loot drop chance for veteran and elite NPCs on Legendary Difficulty. Then we have the vendors, added named items to both open world and dark zone vendors. Increased prices for named items, increased item quality for all vendors. Vendors no longer sell superior quality items at maximum level. So, no more purples. <laughs> That's really nice to know. Then you have the SHD levels, added field proficiency cast to SHD level up after reaching the maximum season level. Increased crafting material rewards for spending SHD level points in the scavenging category. Added Season SHD Experience Gain for Conflict Level Up, for you guys who like to do conflict. Rogue Agent Encounters. Every Rogue Agent killed would now drop loot. Rogue Agent Encounters no longer occur during time trials. So when you guys are trying to run through a time trial now, you will not have to deal with Rogue Agents popping up and just ripping you a new one. Control Point Officers. Players revived by Control Point Officer now have 80% of their armor restored, previously zero, which is really nice. Reduce the likelihood of a Control Point Officer being down in combat. And you have bounties, which is bounties acquired by speaking to characters in the open world will always be set to the difficulty at the time of the acquisition or higher. This affects the snitch and civilians rescued during the public execution or rescuing, uh, rescuing living world activities. Schedule bounties, such as daily and clan bounties, are unaffected. Then we have the projects. New season pass holder project slot. Season pass holders now have access to exclusive daily missions which provide a larger bonus to XP. Weekly SHD Requisition Project slot. In-game players now have World Tier 5 and Level 40 now have a weekly supply donation project, which uh, rewards them with an exotic cash. For World Tier 5 players, this replaces the previous daily SHD Requisition Project. Legendary Mission Project after TU10. Completing any Legendary Mission will grant you this weekly Legendary Mission project slot. Completing the designated Legendary Mission will reward you with an exotic cash. So for you guys who are doing the Legendaries, now you can get an exotic cash for completing the designated Legendary Mission. Next is going to be PvP, which is the Global Modifiers, Skill Modifiers, and Weapon Pacific. You can see Global Increased Marksman Rifle PvP Damage by 12%, which is not included in the PTS if it's red if I remember correctly. Um, reduced Global PvP Weapon Damage by 20%. Assault Rifle PvP Weapon Damage by 15%. Reduced Rifle PvP Damage by 5%. And Reduced SMG PvP Damage by 10%. Skill Modifiers Reduced Bleed Damage from Stinger Hive, Mortar Turret, and Explosive Seeker Mine by 75% which is quite a lot. 
Weapon specific, increased double barrel shotgun PvP damage by 20%, reduced pestilence PvP damage by 10%, and reduced classic M1A damage by 5%. Now here's something to PTS2, or this is additional balancing adjustments. Negotiator's Dilemma, reduce the range at which marked targets can out damage each other when critically hit, PvP only. Added visual UI feedback when in range or another marked target. And Imperial Dynasty no longer automatically applies burn status to affect the nearest enemy in range. Now it requires maintaining range and uh, line of sight for 3 seconds between the holster, bear, and nearest enemy before applying the burn stats effect. Added visual UI feedback to reveal the radius of effect in PvP and an indicator for line of sight between the holster bear and the nearest enemy. Pestilence, Plague Outcast damage over time effect no longer triggers the True Patriot White debuff. Armor repair effect for PvP and PvE. Weapon balancing, 1% weapon handling now gives, or this is weapon uh, handling, Changes, 1% accuracy, stability, reload speed, and swap speed, up from 0.25%. Reduce the maximum amount of weapon handling rolled a year by 4% to a maximum of 10% at level 40. Then you have the 10% accuracy, stability, swap speed, and reload speed. This is going to be some of the weapon changes. I'm not going to cover all these, but you guys can take a look. I'll show you real quick. Uh, if you use any of these weapons, you guys can see the buff from least to highest. So if you guys love the AK, it's the highest, so you get a 15.8 damage increase. Now for the LMGs... You can see the classic M60 is now getting a 12.5 damage increase. And you can see some of these did, did, you know, didn't get any changes. So if you guys use the M249, the M249 para, HK46, uh, with the MK46, my bad, and the MG5, uh, no changes. But the infantry MG5 got a damage decrease with 3.2%. Marks and rifles, model 700 is 14.9 damage increase. You can see the surplus and the paratrooper got a damage increase as well. And for damage decrease, you guys can see that uh, the Classic M1A got a 12.6 damage decrease for you guys using the M1A, and the UCI, or the UIC-15, got a 21.6 damage increase. SMG for the highest, which is 38.8 damage increase for the Tommy Gun, uh, and the Tactical SBR Vector 9mm got a 5.9 damage increase as well. Uh, but overall, it appears they didn't really um, nerf really any of the uh, SMGs. But for the shotguns, you can see there's a damage increase for most of these. Um, the KSG, the SPAS-12, E870. Then for the gear changes, which is the main talent ongoing directive, hollow point ammo is no longer dropped on kill and instead automatically added to your active weapon when killing a stats affected enemy. Backpack talent new. Trauma specialist increases the duration of your bleed stats effect by 50%. All bleed damage done by 100%. Increase three piece reload speed bonus from 20% to 30%. Then you have tip of the spear, aggressive recon weapon damage buff is now gained when dealing specialization weapon damage instead of on specialization weapon kill. PvP talent, aggressive recon weapon damage is now gained when dealing grenade damage instead of on grenade kill. Backpack talent new, signature move increases specialization weapon damage by 20% and doubles the amount of specialization ammo generated by aggressive recon. Ace and eights, main talent, poker face, backpack talent is now baseline effects, flip an additional card on headshots. Backpack talent new, which is aces and sleeve. Amplifies one extra shot when revealing your hand. System Corruption now repairs 20% of your armor in addition to granting 50% bonus armor. Increases total weapon damage by 1% per 5 bonus armor gained up to 20%. So overall, I'm really excited to see that they actually did mess with System Corruption. Now you get a 20% repair of your armor instead of just the bonus armor. Then now we have Striker, which is one I was looking really forward to. Uh, reduce the number of stacks lost on missed shots from 3 to 2. Backpack Talent. No longer reduces number of stacks lost on missed shots. And new increases total weapon damage gained per stack of strikers. Gamble from 0.5% to 0.65%. So I can see striker being used a lot more in this new update. Now brand set changes. You can see these ones are for Overlord, Douglas, Harding, and Fenris. And these are just increases from the two-piece and three-piece bonus and the two-piece on Overlord. So if you guys are a fan of those, they did get an increase. This is some of the talent changes for leadership and creeping death. Any skill changes when Shock Trap is active, duration ends, its cooldown is refunded to an equal number of seconds. That was active. Stinger High, Mortar Turret, and Explosive Seeker Mine is now displayed in bleed damage and duration. And you guys can see all the bug fixes here if you're curious. I'll slowly uh, scroll through all these so you can see which ones, uh, if you're curious if they fix any of them. The red ones are not currently in the PTS. And that's going to be about it for Wave 1 for the PTS patch notes. So if you guys uh, have anything you want to pretty much comment on this, please put it in the comment section below. But this is phase one, and we'll have to see what comes out in phase two. 
Uh, later on, I will be making a video on each individual gear set when this update comes out and also covering the weapons and stuff like that. And also, uh, you know, there is high-end weapons, a new one. I saw a new AR, but I can't remember the name of it, but there is, you know, new AR uh, coming. It's a new, um, new named one, but it appears to be the Growl 556. If you guys played Modern Warfare, that's kind of what it looks like, uh, but I will be covering that later on in a future video, but I don't want to make this video too long. So that's pretty much it for the PTS patch notes. But thank you guys all for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more Division 2 content, and I'll catch you guys all later.